When I was a little boy, I enacted lots of battles. I had these exact toy soldiers when I was a kid. I love these, but never in my life did I imagine that I would be using these things to represent viruses, nor did I imagine I'd be a virologist. I kind of thought I'd be a professional football player, or maybe a Marine, or um, something like president. <laughs> I am a Marine, I'm a Marine pushing back the frontiers of knowledge, fighting battles in the name of truth. Viral latency is an elegant immune evasion strategy where the virus purposely turns off most of its gene expression. And in that state, it can't make productive new viruses, but the benefit it gains from that is it can hide from the immune response. And this is the way those viruses that are long evolved to infect man can take up really long-term infections. In this example, we're going to talk about a herpes simplex infection where this Lego tree represents the gorilla base, which uh, the virus uses to hide from the immune response in its latency. And in this example, we'll use these toy soldiers uh, to represent the hidden latent genome of the virus. So herpes simplex 1, the typical the cold sore associated virus, takes up latent, res latent residency deep in the trigeminal gang ganglia on the side of your face, one hemisphere of your face and it expresses essentially no proteins, just an RNA in this state, it keeps the cells alive, and it stays in that state until this cell senses stress responses. So there's a central hub of stress signaling that can sense whether there's nutritional deprivation, UV stresses, other kinds of stresses. The virus then kicks in from its hidden state, it makes a low level of the virions, and then these virions march down these long extended processes from the gorilla base, till they get to the epithelial cell, which is represented here by the Lego Empire State Building. So when the virus gets to those cells, it starts to really uh, increase its gene expression and replication levels. It starts to crank out tons of virus. And it's that blistery lesion that you rub and touch that helps shed the virus to new hosts. And so when you get a cold sore, this is really an enhanced immune inflammatory response. This is your immune response working to purge these infected cells of, that are undergoing lytic infection with the virus. And as the virus replicates more and more, you're recruiting more and more of an inflammatory response or the immune response. These are the good guys. So the cytotoxic T cell says, hey, there is foreign antigen being presented on the cell. I'm going to secrete cytokines and kill this cell and alert the rest of the adaptive immune response. And then this other arm, this guy here comes in. He's the adaptive immune response represented by B cells. It secretes a bunch of antibodies that are neutralizing these newly released virions, but also creating a signaling milieu that tells other effectors of the immune response to be recruited here. And this is what eventually causes regression of the cold sore. But in the meantime, many of these viruses were dispersed and through the act of touching, usually through skin-skin uh, contact, uh, you then recruit and infect a new host. And then once again, initiate the cycle, crawl back the neuron of the new host and get back to a new gorilla base in a different ganglion and a different host. And in the meanwhile, even if you get rid of all the infected cells with either drugs or the immune response, there's always this gorilla base that stays hidden from the drugs or the immune response. And so once you stop the treatment or the immune response is no longer alerted to the presence, eventually there'll be another stressor that will tell these viruses to march out and start the process again. And so this is the same, although it's completely different cells, it's a completely different mechanism latency, but it is latency. It's the same thing HIV is doing, using the same advantages that simplex derives from this strategy of restricted gene expression in a cell that's not under immune attack. So the problem, the reason we haven't cured herpes infections, the reason we haven't cured HIV infections, we've only contained them, is because that latent reservoir hides from the drugs as it hides from the immune response. A long-term goal, a holy grail of the field has been so-called purging the latent reservoir. So if you had a way to trick the gorilla base into looking like an epithelial cell to the immune response, so if you had a way to trick these cells into undergoing full virus gene expression, then theoretically you could now mount the adaptive immune response to cells that are normally hidden. 
then the, the immune response can clear those cells. And if you take away the ability of the gorilla viruses to get out and colonize new cells, then eventually you would wipe out the whole infection.